Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Sunderland Select Board. If we can call to order at 6.39, we're a little bit late, and uh, we're dealing with both paper and electron difficulties, and that's all good. Um, tonight, we're going to talk about our state of emergency update, obviously, we'll talk a little bit about articles and motions, uh, select board updates, uh, town administrator updates, uh, budget letters uh, being sent to the school districts, the Union 38 slash uh, Frontier Regional, as well as Franklin Tech. We're going to update our annual town meeting calendar because we have to have a countdown from when town meeting is to when all of our boxes need to be checked. And uh, in doing that change, moving to June 5th and June 6th, uh, we have some latitude uh, moving forward on things like warrant and just making sure our postings are correct um, and making sure we don't mess it up because this is irregular. Like everybody else's year, this is an irregular year for us as well. Hope everybody's doing well and staying safe. And uh, we'll start with comments from the board. Any comments, Tom or David? Well, um, Mr. Chair, if I could, we had um, a meeting at Zoom meeting at nine o'clock this morning with the uh, Frontier EDS, um, and we basically review if if we have problems or the problems. It appears that the um, the, the the four towns, Sunland, Deerfield, Whiteley, and Conway, are doing pretty well. Um, we're, we're looking at, we are looking at what happens down the road and with, with testing and antibody testing and all that kind of good stuff. Um, so that, that's going, you may not, there's not a lot to report on that, but it's happening in the background. I mean, those conversations are taking place. Um, and, and, and we, we, we talk every, every Monday, I think Monday, right, Jeff? Every Monday we talk about that stuff. Um, and we just, when we discuss problems um, that may arise in, in the, the four towns and, and, and how we deal with it. So the four towns, our four towns are working close together. Um, I like, Mr. Chair, if it's okay, I'd like to uh, share a, a uh, email I received tonight from the uh, um, South County Senior Center Director. Uh, Christina Johnson, um, and, and it appears that our Sunderland Elementary School um, is is having a um, one of the teachers, Kim, who is a special edu uh, ed teacher. Um, she heard from uh, Principal Ben uh, that the senior center was looking for the local schools to uh, uh, partner with the uh, a pen pal with the senior center, and Kim took took up the charge. Um, Christina is absolutely amazed, uh, and she reached, Kim reached out to the fourth, fifth, and sixth grade teachers, asking them to let their students know about this opportunity. Um, a few seniors, um, South County seniors have actually shared the letter with Christina. It means a lot, folks. So it means a lot to them. And, and Christina was very impressed, um, with, with the, the writing and how impressed the uh, the people that got the letters were to receive the pen pal letters, um, Kim Kim the the instructor at Sunderland Elementary School um, had a conference call with the kids and was actually uh, taught them how to uh, write a letter. But uh, a lot of us no longer write letters, so uh, um, it, in that is a um, is, is a great thing. And I'd like to um, express my thanks to Kim, Sunderland Elementary School, and uh, Principal Ben for doing a wonderful thing um, to help us through this time. I also have a request. Um, Christina and I were talking today about entertainment. Um, and what we're trying to, to work with is a Zoom a thing where we're going to have some instrumental with maybe some sing-alongs also. And the other concern that we are thing that we're trying to do is looking at how do cribbage is a very big game that they like to 
Uh, a lot of Sunnis like to play uh, cribbage. They also like to uh, do bingo. So if someone has an idea out there of how to make that happen, um, I'd be really happy to hear from you. And we could use a little expertise in trying to make those things happen. So if, if you have that talent to be able to do that, uh, please contact me. You can get, get hold of me through the Sleckman's email and or you call our Sleckman's office at 665-1441 and leave a message and I will return, I will return the call. Um, South County EMS, the other group that we're involved with, um, Zach um, is 100% staff. Um, the number of calls that they are making has been reduced um, throughout this. Um, but he is 100% staff. Um, they, are, they are answering all their calls um, and they have not had any problems getting uh, the necessary PPE to protect the, uh, our EMP. So in that respect, um, we are fully staffed. If somebody doesn't have a problem, please do not hesitate to call. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great, Tom. Uh, just to piggyback on Tom's points, you know, the town and its functions are all here for you. There are other people on this meeting or involved in this meeting right now from our local EMD to our police chief to our folks in the school administration, believe it or not, are working mainly probably more hours than you'd expect that they're here for you. So I want to thank them all for that. Take this time to appreciate everybody who's working hard behind the scenes. Um, David, you want to weigh in with anything? Uh, no, I'm good. I think we can dive right into the uh, COVID-19 update fund. Cool. Hey, EMD, what's going on? Hello, all. Um, I don't have anything new to report other than I did follow back through with Rich Brinda, and he is all set for PPE. Um, I did give him a call. It was two weeks ago, and I forgot to report it last week. Um, but he is all set. Um, and I did miss the EDS call today. Sorry, I had my job interfered. No. <laughs> That's the best emergency report ever. <clears throat> right? Nothing to yep. report the best Exactly. <laughs> Chief, everything okay out there in the world? Everything's going well. We're working with the public on different complaints coming in, but for the most part, everyone's still calling in and informing us of anything that they have. And and with, without any details, uh, the, the, the tenor of the general public is still calm, I hope. Oh, most definitely. Everyone's been very uh, receptive to any suggestions that are brought forth, whether it come from the government or from us. Great. Great. Thanks so much. Jeff, along the uh, emergency uh, update, state of emergency update, anything from the town administrator side? Oftentimes we come back in, to the town administrator, financial team, EMD teams for actions. So what's going on in the planning world? Anything that we are, haven't covered yet? Um, just the, uh, as of today, um, the governor is still sticking with the May 4th timeline for sort of reopening businesses. He said there was going to be an update probably later this week, uh, either to confirm that everything's, or he's planning on reopening things uh, next week or to delay that, um, but didn't make a commitment today. And also, um, as of, I think this morning, I think the Paycheck Protection Program had run out of money a few weeks ago and they stopped accepting applications, but um, I think it was recapitalized. And so if there are any businesses that haven't applied yet, um, that is still an option uh, and, and open again. And that's a great point to bring Jeff. Uh, if we, there are small businesses in town they can contact their banks, uh, the SBA. This is an indirect program. You got to go through a bank to get there, but still. If I may, um, yeah. you're a small business and you happen to use Square as your credit card company. Square is taking applications for the SBA PPP. So check with Square hmm. too. Oh, that's a great point. I didn't realize that. That's wonderful. Thanks for, thanks for the help. Nice. Anything else, Jeff? 
Um, not directly on, on COVID. Okay. So let's jump down then and look at our minutes of April 21. And again, we're still in the business of being in an, an open and accessible town uh, meeting. And people who want to check these minutes are always available. And we make sure to collect them. And thanks, Jeff, for the good and Cindy for the good work on them. Municipal aggregation was part of a discussion last week, and there was an interesting piece about renewable energy, energy sources, total costs, total cost per kilowatt hour, and it'll be interesting to see how this ends up playing out. No decisions other than the application were and the schedule were made. So again, as this moves forward, it's important to bear in mind residents themselves will still have a choice to opt out of whatever plan is finally developed. That said, is there a motion on the minutes of April 21st? Uh, motion. Second. There's a motion made and seconded. And Dave, you're right. These ear things work much better. Uh, motion is made and seconded on the minutes of the 21st. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Next up, uh, we had to do warrant articles, draft motions. I want to move those down and talk about budget letters, correspondence. I see we've got... Darius and Peter and FCAT here. Um, and let's talk about the current cycle that we have. Our warrant, initial warrant was opened, filled and closed. We're gonna talk in a little bit about our schedule on the warrant. Of course, the annual town meeting is out there in June 5th and uh, that allows us some time with respect to the warrant. There were two articles that Jeff has brought forward uh, to talk about one being North Main Street, another one may well be from the CPA. Those we'll talk about in a minute. But our budget letters going to Frontier and to Franklin Tech uh, draft are in front of us. People who have paid attention understand that there's a there's a, a both a, a loss in the revenues on the state side, as well as a significant increase in the expenses on the state side, as well as on the town side loss in those revenues. I'd like to look at the letters first. We had originally started this conversation a little over a month, about a month ago, about a month ago, with some guidance from the MMA about three to five percent reduction in the existing ask. Uh, that looked like then to be a bit dire and now frankly looks to be a bit rosy. Uh, that said, our correspondence to each district, to Darius uh, and to uh, Rich Martin, Rick Martin, set out some guidance. Any questions about the correspondence, Tom or David? I'm all right, Scott. Thank you. Nope. nope. I think it's motion good. To sign, motion to sign and send? Motion. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, three to zero, please. That said, let's talk about the nuts and bolts of it. It's really hard at this point Darius, Peter, everybody else who will be watching in the future, future you, uh, to uh, try to understand where our revenue piece is at, as well as the budget impacts in the current year for the extraordinary steps being made. Uh, that said, uh, our correspondence is pretty clear. You know, any impacts, we're looking for some kind of review. Darius, and we're, we're acting as we hope responsible partners in this. Um, but the questions that come out of this is additional information coming out of the current year for reductions or increases, supplies, equipment, labor, transportation, et cetera. And you're getting the cliff notes right now. And then what areas of costs can be reduced a balance against what areas of costs you're increasing. That's the current year. The following year, the one we're actually budgeting for, is, is, is a, a little more concept than reality right now. We know what some of those expenses are going to be coming out of your budget process, but we're not entirely sure what new expenses and or what cost shifting there is going to be going into the year. We know we're closed for the year, and I think Darius a year ago, I'm sorry, Two weeks ago, that wasn't quite sure. Now it's sure. We're closed for the year, but still providing education. Um, so expect these correspondence and 
let's have uh, the first pass at how it is that we can work together on uh, what the correspondence is asking for. And Peter, thanks so much for bridging the, bridging the communication piece. You've come in to a bunch of our meetings on, on this format or in real time or individual correspondence. And I want to thank you for that. So what are we going to save this year and what's going to cost us this year? It's a different world and how do we go about it? I don't know. Darius, you want to talk to it or? Sure. Um, what's going to cost us this year? Hopefully we'll be saving some money this year. Uh, right now we've frozen um, all non-accessional accounts in, in preparation for a uh, poor fiscal outfit of the fourth quarter and um, looking at the next year's budget. So, um, like I said, we, we've frozen all um, non-essential spending. Um, you know, the round numbers of savings, it's kind of a, a range, but probably between ten dollars and $15,000 we saved in that area. Um, then we have, you know, other things that will have to be uh, seen, you know, other pools of money, you know, their salaries and that kind of stuff that have to be worked out. Um, through the end of the year, we won't have a firm number of those savings moving until the end there. Our food um, costs are already, um, I would say, encumbered in a way through the revolving accounts. The school committee agreed to continue to pay the um, school cafeteria folks. Um, they are still doing meal services to the students in the town center and the other four towns. And anybody under the age of 18 who's looking for a meal, um, please give us a call and we will get you signed up. Um, so, you know, those are, um, I mean, I'll be a slight expenditure there, but I expect we'll, we'll get some savings from transportation. Still working that out with Gripco Transportation <coughs> now and our special ed um, transportation providers. Um, so, uh, you know, closing out the year, um, you know, salaries are still the majority of our budget. So there's not going to be a ton of savings going into the end of the year, but we certainly are not projecting to be any sort of deficit and hoping you have money to carry over okay. to help reduce the, the uh, impact of next year. So are there any, are there any um, labor savings in the current year? I mean, if we're not going to be in the building, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be the guy who, the guy who's laid off everybody in my company. Are there any considerations to layoffs? No. So <clears throat> the, uh, First of all, our, the majority of our, our staffing is union. And so those, yep. um, those contracts are gonna be um, followed through. And they're providing um, education to the students <clears throat> and, and, and dividing members within the union. And we're trying to get everybody and keep everybody busy within the union um, in those, uh, the IAs and teachers. Um, the custodians, um, <clears throat> we're looking and you're talking about a small force on the um, Sunderland side and a little larger force on the frontier side. Um, we're waiting for that uh, May 4th lifting, and we plan on doing summer work early, get some savings there, not have to pay the extra summer help, um, get the building kind of open, get ready sooner, and um, you'll be able to shift some forces around to um, get the buildings ready for the school year a lot earlier, and then also do some other odds and end projects that, um, you know, especially the, you know, in the size of our staffing at Sunderland Elementary, um, more man hours would certainly help out hanging out certain areas, maybe painting, do some other kind of um, things that can fall into the custodial realm. So that, that's what's happening there. Um, we did agree to um, pay our, our lunch staff all the way through. Um, that's coming out of the revolving accounts. Uh, and that, those, that information was shared at the last school committee me meeting um, and how that those revolving accounts are going to they're going to take a hit. Um, they're going to be okay to survive this year. We're going to have to see how that rolls over through next year. And I think that was the real concern that Shelly Prater, our business um, director, um, had concerns about not this year, but the following year that we see those accounts possibly, um, you know, kind of affecting the general budget because we may have to see where they end up. It all depends on your enrollment and participant enrollment in the after school and before school program as well. We agreed to pay those off. The other side on that was if you just lay them all off, then the town was going to be cut with the burden of paying unemployment. And so looking at the costs of that, um, you know, you're basically the number of work days between now and the end of the school year, um, and the ongoing cost of employment and that kind of thing, it, it kind of, you know, the, our analysis was we were better off um, staying with, you know, keeping those people employed 
and um, taking on those those expenses. And so again, that was brought the school committee and, and that was voted across all four towns. We did as a joint decision and then met individually as a school committee to talk about the long, long range impact of those of those decisions. But um, so there was consistency within the, the union. It wasn't a union decision, but you know, they're acting in on that. So those are your kind of the, the different pools of people um, administratively. You know, right now administrators are probably working longer hours than they were working prior. <laughs> um, in the sense that they're just all, it takes up your whole day. These these kind of meetings take twice as long as regular meetings, and they're checking in with you know um, teachers and um, different team groups, and we're not even begun to start to look at how we're going to reopen next year, which is going to be a whole other. Um, and what are we going to do about summer services and those students who require special education, additional services? that um, we're gonna be having to do some makeup ground with. Um, a, lot of, a lot of work ahead of us there. So that was kind of my summary of Thanks, I appreciate what's going on with the employee, paying the employees. I, I appreciate the, uh, the, the candor. I think that's it's just wonderful. Tom or David, you wanna weigh in on that? Well, my, my, my only question, Darius, is, uh, is what happens next year? Um, you know, la, la, we, we've been hearing that uh, the state's going to be like six million dollars short on the uh, on the revenue next year, and six billion out of what are they taking twenty eight to thirty two billion a year? That's that's a yeah, we're thirty three a, a pretty heft a pretty hefty number. Um, what what have you looked? You kind of worried me a little bit when you said that you couldn't play off because of the, uh, I, I mean, you're kind of, your hands are tied because of the union. So how, how do we look at what happens next year? Do we have to do, you know, that's something that we really need to start looking at now? Um, I mean, it's seriously. Yeah, I mean, basically the way the uh, the numbers are coming out and working with the state associations and, you know, I'm getting some, obviously, <clears throat> trying to get as much information I can what's coming out of the state and then looking at it through other people's lenses, other districts and talking about other people. Um, they basically said, you know, a lot of it's going to depend on what kind of federal money the state gets um, and how that's going to be applied to Chapter 70 funding. Um, and, we'll, and again, I'm talking to the school's lens. You guys are looking at, you guys got a larger, larger lens than I do um, in that regards. Yeah. Um, they don't believe that there's going to be any, you probably already heard this, no 9C cuts likely in the fourth quarter because it's be far too difficult for municipalities to handle those kind of things when most of the money's already been spent or tied up into something that's going to be spent. Um, you know, Massachusetts is looking at uh, $215 million for K-12 coming from the federal government. 90% of that is going to Title I and another 10% of that is going to go to state initiatives, um, such as, you know, different people who aren't going to get hit by the Title I. Sunderland does get some Title I through its elementaries. Frontier gets some Title I, but that's basically, those are most going to go to um, more urban areas and it's a base in the poverty levels, um, social economic standings of those, of those communities. So we're not going to get a lot of that. Um, there is another $58 million of local relief that um, districts are going to be looking at, trying to get from the state as well. Um, but again, without additional federal monies, the state is uncertain about how it's gonna make up the shortfall toward education. And, and I'm not sure if they're talking about the Student Opportunity Act, which is pretty much was all based on, uh, which we were gonna get a lot of, but it was all gonna be based on appropriated, um, um, you know, getting the funds to do that. Here, so have you heard any, have, have you heard any, uh, any, any whispers or conversation about 9C cuts? So I've heard that there hasn't been any whispers regarding 9C cuts for the fourth quarter. There has been no. There has been no, there's no talk of it, um, basically based, based on the fact that there's, um, it, I think it's gonna be more devastating. I think they're gonna try to ride that out without having to do that. Wow. Um, it, don't, when, don't, 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 I'm just one, no, no, one I, guy I, in it, one district <laughs> of Western Mass, so um, you guys will know probably sooner than I will. No, I, I asked the question because I, I, we haven't heard a lot about that. And, and even in good years, we always see, you know, 9C cuts. So I was, I was surprised that we haven't heard anything. And, and cause we haven't, I, unless Scott I'm, or David, unless I'm missing something, but I haven't heard anything about 9C cuts. Um, and, I was going to call this, 
I was on a call this morning um, with Jay Sullivan, who is kind of the um, financial uh, guru of um, Desi, and um, yep. he said he had not heard, and he did not believe that they would go that route because of the havoc it would cause. I mean, where would you cut from at this right. point of the year? You've already spent uh, that, the majority of the money. Right. That, that, those would be really devastating if they, if they went that route. You'd have to shut down government. You know, I, mean, I don't know what you do to, you, you, you know what I mean? I don't know. So anyways, he didn't believe that was the key, that was going to happen. So that's where I'm going to get in my, but then again, he goes, I mean, he's not the, they're not asking him, but you know, that's what he believes. So. Okay. I, I, again, I, I was just, I was just seeing because I, we haven't heard anything either. And I, that's usually the first thing that comes up and it's like, you guys take care of it. So, okay. Thank you, dear. Yeah. David, anything you want to add? No, I'm good. So Darius, is, if I could, you're going to retain staff. Your, your goal, the goal on the facilities, uh, obviously instruction continues and it's a different kind of instruction, which is, can be in, intense for all, everybody involved. Um, and your uh, administration side, obviously working more because of having to work through the, the chaos that we're dealing with now. And on the buildings and ground side, uh, the goal is to, if the buildings are accessible, to try to jumpstart the summer schedule for work inside those spaces. I captured that correctly? That is correct. Cool. Peter, you want to weigh in on anything? Um, actually, I mean, I'm, what I'm actually interested in is sort of the same question that you asked Darius about the schools, but about the town in terms of you know, where the town uh, seems to be sitting in terms of um, either either possible savings or additional expenses for the rest of this fiscal year based on uh, this whole, uh, you know, virus scenario. And, and the reason I'm asking is that, um, you know, I think it's real important. You know, I, I've heard Scott say or Tom, and I've said the same thing. We're all in this together. And so that there have been times, certainly in the discussions we had at the joint school committee meetings and our own school committee meeting, that we want to sort of be on the same path as the town as far as you know how we're dealing with personnel, how we're dealing with you know the various changes. And so, you know, I would sort of you know maybe not now, but at some point also a sense of you know is the town taking the uh, similar approach so that again we're sort of you know, responding to this in a similar way. Right. Jeff, you want to weigh in that from your last department heads meeting? Uh, as I recall, there was the expenditures of very little money had to get sent through our office for approval across all departments. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Um, so for this fiscal year, we've also instructed our departments um, not to spend anything that isn't essential and necessary. Um, we have asked that any expenditures in excess of $500 um, be pre-approved before they get to the select board. Um, so for, for this fiscal year, we're looking at, um, you know, how, how we can minimize costs as much as possible and, and save funds like the schools are for, for next year. Um, we do... We are looking at, at what the costs are um, as far as COVID-19 related emergency expenditures. Um, and we've set up a separate account for that so that in reimbursement from FEMA and NEMA um, to the greatest extent possible, you know, 75%, I've heard that there's a request for the federal government to reimburse those expenses at 100%, which would, you know, if that's approved and, and we do all the accounting right, um, would mean no additional expenses for those uh, to the town directly. Um, and then again, looking at fiscal year 21 and, and what's ahead, as Scott mentioned, you know, we've gone to the departments and asked them to revisit their budgets and, and look at additional cost savings measures um, in anticipation of budgets being lower than expected. Oh, thanks. I mean, that's, I, again, I think we're, you know, we're all, we're trying to stay on the same page, um, you know, with the school and, and we've got different issues we've got to deal with, but it's still, you know, we're all in the same situation. And um, I think that, 
you know, the other thing I don't know if Darius wants to add to anything, add anything is, um, you know, throughout all this, we're still trying to keep up the best possible education for the kids. And, um, you know, same way as town departments are still trying to do their jobs, you know, under sometimes difficult conditions. But Darius, I don't know, is there anything you, you, you could report in terms of how that, your sense is that that's going is to, you know, are we making educational progress, you know, as the days go by, or are we just trying to sort of, you know, <laughs> um, No, we, we, actually are doing, we actually are doing very well. Um, uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time comparing ourselves to other districts and stuff, but I would say we're ahead of the curve. Um, basically the state with its, um, the state released on Friday, um, the changing of its mode from, we kind of rolled out, you know, you know, trying to get kids connected, social, emotional awareness and kind of getting into the homes and, and supporting families through the beginning of it. And then we started rolling out more and more um, activities and meetings with teachers. And now we're actually doing essential standards um, so that um, students are going to finish the year um, getting through a portion of the curriculum. You can't get through all of it. It's a different kind of thing. And we're, we're figuring it out as we go and how it works, but um, trying to get the kids to be um, not just given activities and working on skills, but actually starting to learn new skills and, and refining those that they have. So that's kind of the rollout we're doing this week because that's what the, the, the state kind of rolled out last Friday. So we're spending this week, those are our meetings today. We're going to meet with the Conway staff this afternoon and meet with Ben's staff later in the week. Um, so, you know, we're going to be kind of rolling that out and improving improving what we're doing there. And I'll be honest, we also have to look forward to, because, you know, you're hearing that the CDC saying the second wave of this might be mm -hmm. as bad or worse. And so we have to be prepared if we, um, you know, we roll out the fall, if we're going to be coming back to, if we have to shut down for any period of time, that we can jump right into something that we're planning now without having that kind of delayed reaction to the full on, um, you know, full education in the homes. So that's what we're doing. And I just would have one other thing maybe you could say something about, and that would be how we're dealing with all the requirements for the special ed uh, situations and, and uh, you know, how we're managing that and trying to still, you know, deal with the IEPs that kids have and try to keep them, uh, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a good question. It, it's, it's trickier. Um, you know, the, uh, there's been a lot of correspondence and communications with the families. Um, depending on the level of special needs and the level of services they receive. Teachers are working with students on a one-to-one -one on, a, on a kind of video and working with parents one-to-one uh, -one in, in trying to help provide um, both lessons and instruction and, and, and following up on that. We're starting to hold IEP meetings as well um, on that. I mean, there's some services that um, can't be um, delivered in the same way, and we're going to be um, in a position of having to make up services when this is through. Um, we're prepared for that, and we're we also have the budget for that. Um, but uh, I think we're doing a we're doing above an above average job. Um, I think of, of trying to at least keep contact and um, working with the students moving forward, and so not letting them fall off the radar, um, which is easy to do. And it's easy to I want to say it's easy to hide, but it can you could hide very easily, or you know, we're not having the constant follow through to families to making sure they're doing okay on their end. Um, part of our part of our mission now. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank yeah. you, Scott. No, thank you, Peter. I appreciate it. And the the best the best path for us is this, you know, clear and concise and accurate information exchange. That's that's what we're here. Yeah, and thanks, Darius, for coming this evening because, sure. you know, it's way better getting it from him than second or third hand, so. So, I mean, do, are you guys Because he had about... nothing else to do tonight. He had nothing else going on. <laughs> um, date night got canceled. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, uh, we're talking about budgets and such moving forward. I mean, I understand there's going to have to be adjustments to the budget, both Frontiers and Sunderland's. Um, I think... Right now, the, the course is trying to figure out what data to base any reductions off of. And that's kind of one of the issues we're on the same page regarding that. It's not, we're not sitting here with the eyes closed. I've already talked with administrators to be looking at what kind of reductions, and we're talking about all schools um, in preparation for this. Um, however, at the same time, not knowing, and I, and I explained this at the school committee meeting, I know Scott, you were there for that part of it, but the difference between 5%, I mean, 3%, 5%, 7%, you know, each percentage point changes 
you know, it's not a, what different, you don't keep on pulling different tools out of the toolbox because you have a job to do within that toolbox. So if you end up moving three tools, you may not choose the same three if you're only removing two, you know, so you, know, you have to have the tools in order to, to function the school. And so that's why it's really important that we, we know how much we're cutting before we go into, you know, into reduction of, of any kind of, um, you know, either personnel or, you know, services of, of any kind of sort. So that's why we're kind of reluctant about, you know, we're, we're trying to hold on to what kind of percentages are we looking at. And I think we're seeing scattered numbers from really ones where I don't understand how we even function. When you talk about some double digit reduction numbers, um, percentage points versus, you know, something around, you know, lowered from three to five, you know, we, which we're originally talking about. So we're looking at it. So we're behind the scenes are, are, are preparing, knowing that this is the budget seasons that come fast and furious um, when people have some projected numbers that people are going to feel comfortable running off of. Um, the biggest fear I have is that you start, you project too low and then, and then have to cut mid year, you know, um, because that gets very, it's far more difficult staffing wise, uh, emotionally for students who are working with staff and that kind of stuff. And then obviously with staff <laughs> emotionally. Um, and then the other side of it is that if we, um, if we overestimate and then we don't provide the programming that we, um, that we're already kind of in tight budgets um, giving. So that's the kind of, you, you get it. You're doing the same thing with your time. Hey Darius. Well, again, I appreciate, I appreciate, go ahead, Tom. Darius. Could you just uh, pass along my thanks to Principal Ben for the yep. pen pal? That, that's, I, I, I sent I, an I, email when you guys were talking about it. I, you know, I, 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 I know you know the stuff goes on every single day, but a lot of our residents don't know that. And they don't, they, and, and I think that those are the type of things, and, I, and I've talked to the, the newspapers about that, I, I wish the newspapers would report, would report the good things like that. Um, but our young, but our young kids are doing a lot of great things, and that's just an example of one of the great things that they're doing. So if you could, I would greatly you appreciate it. You bet. Because it's made it has made a difference. That's great. Sorry, Scott. So circling back, sorry, Tom. Circling yes. back to your point earlier, Darius, we're going to spend the next couple of weeks narrowing down on what could be the town's version of consensus revenues to the best that we can, that being working with the assessor's clerk, with the finance team, and then we'll do the same thing. I'm sure the school district and uh, associations associated with education are doing, and that is trying to read the tea leaves of the state chapter distributions. As you know, there's, there's no consensus revenue right now at the state level and we fall prey, just as the districts do, to uh, impacts from whichever of the chapters, whether they be 70 or 90 or, in, in your case, you know, some of the other ones, uh, uh, one get impacted. So as soon as we know, or as soon as you know, let's just share and work toward a common goal. What is your, just out of curiosity, what I don't know what's going to happen is, what is the state you know, there's some initial, maybe they're going to speed things up. I mean, I think sometimes we hear people going to ultra conservative group that they were going to say they may not have a, the legislature may not have a budget by the beginning of June. What, what, what will the town do at that point? Or do you think they're going to get there? I, I tried to talk behind the scenes to try to find out if there's any movement and they can project if they're going to have any idea of where they're going. Do you know if they've set any internal deadlines so that the towns can try to do business? Because you heard about them going into the summer and maybe doing a 112 within municipalities as well as the regional schools, you know, I don't know where, you know, how that affects. Are you guys waiting and, to see so that? The, actually that, actually that was going to be my question. One of the questions to you, Darius, is how do you come up with a 112 budget? And, and if you, if you like 112th of this year's proposed budget, FY 21 or all right, one twelfth of FY 20 or, do we go back to a reduction? That, well, that's a wonderful question. Well, there's there's language already in place for regionals because that's just obviously, the, you know, yep. when you go back to the regionals that if you didn't pass a budget, um, you would go to a 112 budget until you got one passed. And it, it doesn't affect schools as badly because you're running off the previous year's budget in the previous year's assessment. 
So that's another important thing you know, that's, you know, where I guess Sunderland would not be on the winning end of that going from some, um, you know, last year's budget for Frontier. But, and then, you know, if you have the month of July in August, there's, you know, whatever increases that you have contractually, you could find money and other things because the school year had an open. And so most regional school districts, whoever had gone on the 12th, they didn't get crushed by it because, because they were able to, either in the summer months, if they could go to municipalities, which really can't go to a 112 budget, but they could do let you do deficit spending, that's a whole nother, I mean, they're gonna have to teach everybody how that's done <laughs> very quickly and how, in what forms you're supposed to fill out to get that right. Um, right, and that's what I mean, it's tough. So Jeff, you were in the conference call a week, a week ago, or maybe more than a week ago after uh, the executive order allowing for 112 budgeting was other than the announcement, was there any guidance? Um, <clears throat> well, it, yeah, I mean, I think the DLS is working on additional guidance. Um, there wasn't anything specific about how you go about doing it other than saying uh, there needs to be a plan that's approved both by the select board and by the director of accounts from the Division of Local Services at DOR. Um, I know that there are a lot of concerns about the implementation, I'll say, of a one twelfth budget. And does that mean that you have to create yeah. a new account every month for each <laughs> item that you pass and how much effort is that going to take to do every month? Um, you know, so uh, we haven't gotten specific guidelines from the state yet on, on one twelfth budgeting that I'm aware of. So as, as we go, as we go forward, uh, board members, the, and we get the finance committee involved, you know, we have to look at a handful of both, timelines as well as potential scenarios and can, conventional wisdom in the current environment is you're not going to have the same revenues as you had last year that would be conventional wisdom whether it's state or whether it's even local um, the costs those the cost of supporting communities uh, at the state level is certainly higher and you can expect I can expect that to trickle through and that comes down to us so as we talk about budgeting forward, uh, you know, maybe, maybe the discussion's got to be around, we go out of uh, town meeting with something that's, uh, we, st we start with level, start with zero budgeting, right? Here's this year's budget. We know we can afford that and it's painful, but we also know that we're going to have revenues that are going to be declined. Um, and that maybe, that maybe that's our starting point, or we take the guidance from the MMA and go, well, take all of your state revenues and expect the local revenues impacted either by growth or because of the current economics uh, or um, the current expenses being grown either through, you know, people looking for abatements or lack of growth or just make it all flat. What does a flat year look like? And that's our starting point. But again, that's a discussion we, we have to, we have to continue to have both internally as well as with the finance committee. I remember we did, we asked about three to five percent reductions to all department heads as well as the schools, and that's three to part three to five percent off of the request, which was a growth request. And I get the services versus expense. I've been doing it a long time. I understand the dynamics, but those realities are maybe it's flat, and that's our starting point. But again, that's just me, you know, throwing it out there. So, so Scott. What do, what what percentage of our what percentage of our budget comes from the state revenue? Yeah. If you include the schools, it might be north. It might be north of twenty five to twenty seven percent. That's what I'm thinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So yeah. you. Well, that, that's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at what the, the state proportion, which, which is, it, it, well, I guess I'm going to, Hang back on. 15, 18 years ago, the state had uh, 65, 70% of our education budget. Now that's way down, way down. 
from that. So that's a good thing. We, uh, we depend, so Darius would be more concerned, our school is probably more concerned on the federal, what to get from federal also. That's probably a big thing for us. And I guess at some point we have to talk to the to the state and find out if they're going to still hold us accountable to our Massachusetts way of doing business, accounting. That is. Well, yeah, you can't. You, you're 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 not, you're not going to get cash accounting taken out of the equation this year, Tom. So you're saying we can't start printing money, Scott? <laughs> if, if you're listening to the the senate president we could just declare bankruptcy it seems to work yeah <laughs> sorry tom it's it's just north of 27 yeah that's what i kind of thought scott it, you know 25 yep. so, so you know you, you say 25 27 percent out of our total budget and and so if they re, if they go from 32 to they, they reduce by six go from 32 to six so that's you know probably 25% of the local, maybe. It'll be a very interesting budget. Very interesting budget. Right. Well, the calculations, there, there's a handful on the state level, there's a handful of inputs that we're counting on this year to be full year that certainly are not. One's recreational marijuana, the one second is the full year of uh, uh, gambling. That's not gonna happen. I mean, you just look at it from the macro level, and then look at the bleeding of things like the unemployment insurance where they're already this, this current week hitting their trust. They're not even working off a regular budget. There's today's globe. There's 180 million more moved after the 300 million a week ago to fund up hospitals. So it, it just, we can't print money, but I give the administration a lot of credit for the rapidity in which they're shifting it. It shifts from somewhere. That's the part that is the hard part to get your head around. Yeah. Plus all the reduction from the reduced economic activity. Well, that's it. And you've got that as well. Yeah. So anyway, Darius, that was a long winded answer to saying it's not going to be great. <laughs> I get it. Okay. Uh, anything else with respect to budget and discussion? And I really do appreciate you carving the time up, both Peter and Darius. Uh, again, as soon as we get information, uh, we'll continue to be uh, both timely and transparent with it. That's important to us. I think it's important to the community. So as soon as we hear it, we'll pass it on. Thank you. Same from here. Yep. Sounds good. Great. Th thanks so much. I'm going to sign off. Okay. Right, See you, Darius. Thanks. Thank you. Go get dinner. You betcha. Bye. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, Jeff, can we talk about the draft? Can we talk about the updated ATM calendar? I think that's more important right now than the actual warrant, although there are two things we have to talk about tonight with respect to the warrant. Yes. So, calendar. I've got it here, and it says, annual time meeting, of course, is June 5th. It's 2020. It's 7 p.m. at the elementary school as of now. It's important to bear in mind your last day to register to vote is September, May 16, 2020. That's voting, not at, uh, that, that's registered to vote. Um, if we have our warrants uh, closed May 1st, that's Friday, we have signing the warrant on the 25th, Mailing notices to residents 27th. These were all last dates. Warrant posted the 29th. Uh, and then we meet with the finance committee somewhere in the week prior. Uh, and then we have something to bring forward to annual town meeting. Am I reading those dates correctly? You are reading them correctly. They were not written correctly. One, one was not written correctly. Um, the articles do by, uh, I apologize that it was, um, it was actually last Friday is six weeks before June 5th. Correct. That I thought so. April 24th. Got it. Sorry. No worries. 
So that said, our warrant has, has essentially closed, right, to additional, to additional work. We can move to open any time. The question I have now from the Dubai is that we have two that we did not take action on. And were they submitted in time before the last Friday? There's a CPC article and there was a debt article from Kestrel, correct? Yes. And you and I spoke about them before last week. So I assume that they made yeah. it in time and this is our read. That That is correct. Um, the the cpc has not met and voted on their article yet yep um but they have they're trying to schedule a meeting for next week i believe to do so the sixth okay. six. thank you tom and um, can we pivot so that's 15 right yes do you want me to pull this up on the screen would that be helpful yeah, that'd be great. Thank you. I'm going to go turn the heat off because it suddenly turned into be 200 degrees in here. <laughs> 72? Really? We got those new heat pumps. Thank you. Perfect. Who's got the thermostat set to 72 in here? 80 over here. <laughs> You're in the town clerk's <laughs> office. Can everybody see what I pulled up? Yes. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So the 15, right? This came out of part of the declaration of emergency and allowing the use of CPA money to help with housing uh rental assistance and again income eligible what's the mechanism outside of the available funds being made how does it work that is a good question that just got submitted i believe today and i have not had an opportunity to review the program itself but the regional housing authority has put together a um a program that it's offering to all the communities that it serves um, using CPA funds for income eligible people. I, I believe that the CPC is looking at appropriating $50,000 to the fund. But um, again, that came in today. So I have not had a, an opportunity to look closely over the details of the program. So Mr. Chair, go ahead, Tom. So I, 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 um, I'm the board's rep on the C, uh, community preservation. And, yes. um, and I, I just saw that come in today as well. And, and one thing that I not, not saying that for or against it, because I really don't know a lot about it yet. But one of the things I asked was why would we, why would it only be restrictive to rental assistance and why not, uh, people that qualify for home mortgages as well. Um, and um, my, I, 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 is that, I don't know if there's, is if it's kind of like a loan or if this is, you know, so you were to give this assistance for a period of time that it would be paid back. I don't, I don't know any of those questions, Mr. Chair. Um, so I would, I would, over the next couple of days, I would be gathering a little bit more information. So for tonight's discussion, right, we've got a warrant that needs to be effectively closed. It is effectively closed. These came in at or near the wire. I, I appreciate um, the sentiment and the fact that using CPA money to assist in housing, that's one of the categories that CPA money is used for, is assisting in housing. Uh, in this case here, this would be administered by the Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority. They're our regional housing authority, and they this is their this is their business. 
the questions uh, coming forward are about application, administration, total values, you know, long-term implications. For tonight's exercise, we have to decide, do we include or not include? We don't have to recommend, but we have to include or not include. Um, I, I would rec I'd recommend that we, that, that I, I think it's worthwhile um, mm -hmm. that we discuss. And, and I mean, I, I mean, Scott, I, I don't know, is this just for Sunderland residents or is this for anybody in Franklin County? Right, 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 and, right. And I was thinking the same thing. Be, yeah, because, mm -hmm. and, and I don't know those answers, but I think they need to be discussed. But, but if it's a, if it's a way to help um, some of our residents, I would think that we'd want to take advantage of it. But I, I think there's other questions that need to be asked. So great. So I would, so, 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 I would, I would support its inclusion. So mechanically, do we need to reopen first, like with a, a motion to reopen the warrant first? Jeff, we spoke about this a week ago. When was it actually received? Uh, it was actually, um, it's been discussed because I mentioned it, I believe, at the select board meeting last week. So I think the, the prior week is when they said that they would have uh, information in the CPC Act. The CPC application, I believe, was submitted uh, either Friday or earlier today. Okay, so to Dave's point, should we just reopen the warrant? And if so, can we open it and up for a period and uh, vote a closing date? Hi, Scott. Hey, Wendy, I, I was hoping you'd weigh in. I, I will weigh in. <laughs> it's, um, we do have a bylaw that yep. says when the last day for people to submit articles to the select board but that's your warrant until you post it. So uh, you can do whatever you want with it. Great. It's your choice, um, but in right up until you post it. Great, so we can move to include not having to have a prior motion to open, knowing that the warrant has already been developed. Right, okay. it's a work in progress. It, uh, Great. And you can do it contingent upon the CPC's recommendation mm -hmm. or however, you know, but if you decide next week you want to take it out, you can. Okay. So again, I think to Tom's point earlier, thanks so much for weighing in, Wendy. I really do value that. To Tom's point earlier, there's some homework about the administration piece by Franklin County. I'm sorry, Franklin County Regional Housing and Redevelopment Authority, which they've been wonderful to work with. We just need to get a little info. It sounds like the skylight's being blown off the building. I hope it's not too windy out there. Um, uh, that, that said, uh, and the ability for the board to simply include, uh, Dave, you want to weigh in on this? And what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, think, it, I think it's a good idea. As, as, as long as we can include it the way it's written everything, um, we should probably you know, include it in there. Uh, because like Tom said, I mean, we got to look at really any opportunities to uh, to help folks where we can to, with what's going on um, right and you know we, we include it and then we can plug in the numbers and then um the mechanics about how how it'll operationally work once we know those facts okay. do you want a motion do you want a motion to um include it actually tom, i think tom spoke or, to it first uh moved yeah. recommending to include and uh, i extended the discussion uh i can second then so we've got a motion made and seconded to include uh, the proposed Article 15. Any more discussion about the inclusion? If not, all those in favor? Aye. 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 So, so okay. Mr. Mr. Scott, while, while we're on CPA money, yep. we had an email from a resident the other day that had a suggestion about yep. uh, CPA money, and I, I was wondering if... Uh, if Jeff could uh, forward that uh, question to um, our legislators. Yeah, I think that's a great use. The, 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 ju the juxtap of the discussion was about the availability of use, I'm sorry, the, expand, the potential to expand the use of CPA monies during an emergency um, as they are available and in reserved accounts 
can those reserved accounts be expanded for other municipal use? Does that capture it well enough, Tom? Yeah, and, 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 yep. and it'd be for FY20 and FY21. Yep. You know, so, so it wouldn't be long term, but it, I mean, at every, every hundred years you have a pandemic. So I, I, I think the, the recommendation was looking at for, you know, you know FY20 and FY, specifically FY20 and FY21 to help get us through this period of time. All right, that would be something they could stipulate right in the adjustment to it. Right. Right, and, and at least I think it'd be, you know, it, it'd be a way to find revenue. Right, mm -hmm. and it was, it was creative thinking for revenue the town's already raised, and in some cases has sitting in reserves. Correct. And you know I, I, I did ask um, along those lines based on, on that email, it got me thinking, and, and so I had um, reached out to DLS to ask if there are other ways, you know, we have a line item for park maintenance and recreation areas and, you know, in, in these extenuating circumstances, would could we, um, for a limited time, use CPA funds and then bring it back into the operating budget in, in better fiscal times? Would that be an appropriate use as well? Yeah. So uh, other potential uses for CPA funds, if, if not for the entire budget. Good. Good. Thanks so much. Yep. And, and, and uh, you know, people who are writing into the office with these really creative questions, it's both A, thanks for, thanks for watching. <laughs> and secondly, <laughs> thanks for, thanks for weighing in with some really creative ideas. So, well, okay. Scott, Scott I mean, that, it's an important thing. I mean, because I, I mean, for us, it's not only, not only the, the stuff that's happening every day, but, but sometimes when you're, we, 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 we look, we, we, we look to our residents to also pass ideas forward because sometimes, sometimes a, an idea may seem perfectly obvious to someone, but we admit we we're so looking at other things. We may never have thought about it. So we want people to come up with ideas. Oh, absolutely. You know? and, and we're, and we're blessed with a, with a, uh, a, a plethora of geniuses in town and that's just great stuff <laughs> lots of stable geniuses oh no well, not, not we, that we, kind of genius i meant real ones we, we know where we know where the geniuses are not on monday night at that's, uh, six that's thirty. right exactly <laughs> you don't have to look far for those there you go and and moving right along yeah. So Jeff, the next is 17, right? This is a, a little bit of a twist in what we do normally with grant and park applications where oh, an agency like Kestrel would bridge for us and then they would pick up the loan and we would, we would uh, simply be holden. Uh, in this case here, they're asking for us to pick up the loan through a series of, a series of steps and until the deal can be closed. Am I capturing that correctly? I believe it's Article Twenty Six, Seventeen Wait is a the minute. Park Grant. Yeah, was just it, reading it's that. similar. In that it's oh, a, so seventeen was included already. Sorry, yes. sorry, 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 yes. sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the language was similar, and it caught my attention. Yes. Um, yep. Yes, that is the idea. Um, I I think that Kestrel is um, at least. Staff is willing to consider the bridge loan, but it, it has not um, necessarily been approved by the board yet. Their board. So uh, until that happens, we um, wanted to offer a fallback article. Um, regardless, we, we have an outstanding question to town council about uh, authorizing the Sunderland Water District with, to acquire land and whether that needs to be by town meeting action. Mm -hmm. um, so I think something would, would sit here, whether it's just authorizing the water district to take it um, or whether that's also to do the financial aspects as well in part B. As you'll see in, in part B, it, there is a, a bridge loan. Um, yep. Got it. Yeah, so there's a little CPA, there's a little water district. Uh, we'll need to get make sure the prior to town meeting, if this is included, the water district actually votes to approve. Um, you know, a little CONCOM money in there, which they, they actually came forward with this last year. 
and then the Kestrel Trust. Got it. Discussion about this. This is essentially the water protection area. Uh, Jason, one of the wellheads, well, the primary wellhead up in the Hubbard field for uh, water supply for the town. And this puts uh, that in permanent protection, that area in permanent protection. It's 40 plus acres. Yep, I think I think water resources are critically important, and they're going to be getting even more important as time goes on. Great so point. Dave. I think uh, I think it makes perfect sense to do that. And again, this mechanism is a is essentially a four part mechanism with the town participating in. And this is not un, this is not unlike other preservation um, preservation restrictions, whether they be uh, APR. Uh, or open space pieces using a variety of sources. It just happens that this language is required this time for this particular piece. And, and, and I think it's got a little more concrete connection too, because it's, you know, the, the key goal is to protect the town's drinking water. So. Great point, David. I think that the tension there is about the town versus the district holding the land. And that's what you were alluding to uh, prior to that, right, Jeff? Yes. And one other thing to note um, that's different than the, the Article 17 with the park grant is that um, we actually already got the contingent drinking water supply protection grant. Great. Um, we, we were awarded that, so there is no um, possibility that we wouldn't get that. So, <laughs> I, Perfect. So, so it's effectively, we'd be expense. bridging it. And I think it's important to bear in mind whatever costs associated with this, this would be probably short-term debt, we'd need to know what that total debt was, right? Whether it's a band for one year. Yeah, I think uh, the, the interest on that would be about $2,000. I talked to the treasurer collector. She looked into it about $2,000 for a six-month bridge and about double that for, for a one-year bridge. Okay, so we can make sure that those are incorporated both in the, in the article, right, as well, I'm sorry, the motion, um, so that we have it in totality. I don't want to have a situation like uh, our carry costs for Riverside uh, Park happen again. And I, that was something I spoke with Kestrel about, and they had actually offered to cover the carrying costs if we were to borrow the money. Okay, very good. See, we learn every time. Any more discussion about <laughs> inclusion of 26? Not hearing any. Is there a motion to include? Motion to include. Second. There's a motion to include and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Circling back to the to the dates again. We're going to sign at least by the 25th. Last day last date of notice to residents 27th. Weren't posting last possible date 29. Uh, these are all in May, meeting with the finance committee in the process thereof, developing budgets, as you heard earlier in discussion with um, uh, the school administration. It's going to be a very dynamic year, so we have to uh, pay close attention to these dates. We wouldn't want to mess this up. Um, we're usually pretty programmatic, and this year, not so much. Uh, and then, it, again, it's important to bear in mind the last day to register to vote here in the town of Sunderland is May 16th. So. That said, um, that's our warrant discussion tonight. Uh, motions uh, in front of us, uh, we have a lot of motions that require money. And so I'm wondering if it's a prerogative of the board to simply set aside our next element of our next meeting to focus exclusively on just the motions. Agreed, Scott. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. We can, as, as we have in the past, we'll include and act on what we can, but things that we can't, you know, we want to be well informed. Okay, passing over that portion of the agenda. Select board updates. We got our letters here to sign. ATM calendar. Thanks for that, Jeff. And uh, any other discussion? Jeff, town administrator updates. We kind of like incorporated it all into the froth of tonight's meeting. You want to call out any more time? Uh, just a couple quick things. Uh, the, the first quick thing is that um, 
Next Monday is going to be my three month and one day anniversary. What? So I didn't oh, know if look at that! Oh, Select boy. board wanted to throw me a party, get me a yeah. kick. no, <laughs> but seriously, provide any feedback on on sort of the first ninety days. Obviously, it's been a a unique time, but um, any any constructive criticism or otherwise, um, anything I can be doing better. I just you know. Uh, just a milestone to to be aware of um and i would certainly appreciate if you want to give me written comments or um or live on tv however <laughs> <laughs> so so just just a quick recap we hired you you went on vacation for a couple of weeks came back covid you had a little surgery stayed home we haven't seen you in a month and a half uh and yeah it's all been good yeah so um yeah, no, it, it's been an interesting three months. I bet, <laughs> I bet. Um, we'll, we'll bring a virtual cake to our next meeting. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, we can blow out the candles. That's go. right. <laughs> Uh, I would, I would piggybacking on that. If there are uh, areas of um, um, areas of opportunity for Jeff or areas that we're thrilled to pass on compliments with Jeff, you know, if we could have before our next meeting, it's not a public, you know, performance evaluation, but there are things that Jeff works really, really hard at the things that he's done here in the short term are already noticeable. And frankly, it's his first time as a town administrator. So if there's things that we uh, are falling short on Jeff, I'd appreciate uh, the feedback equally. Thank you. Um, and then next week I'll, I'll bring you a, a recommendation for a new appointment to the cultural council came in late okay. last week. Um, and then the other thing that I just wanted to mention is about um, the North main street reconstruction and oh, yes. sending out uh, letters because that is moving very quickly. <laughs> um, and so we need to be working or we are working on the temporary easements and the permanent mm -hmm. utility easements. So um, sending out letters to affected residents, informing them of their right to an appraisal, uh, right to just compensation, and at the same time, kindly asking them to donate the easement. Um, as we talked about the, the budgetary uh, challenges <laughs> that we're facing. Um, but so, and I think that the other thing that, that needs to be clarified in the short term is, uh, as was mentioned maybe a month ago, um, the original 100% designs for that, that, that the town wanted were rejected by MassDOT. They came in over budget. So there was a reduced scope that MassDOT approved um, and said that if the town was willing to cover the cost of the additional uh, items that it could all be bid out together um, so that it could be from a contractor's point of view, a single construction project. Um, done at yep. the same time with the same materials and all that stuff and, and in a comprehensive way. Um, what, was the, what was the order of magnitude, Jeff? Was it like 90 grand? I think it was a bit larger than that. I thought oh. it was closer <laughs> to... Uh, 92? <laughs> <laughs> I have it here. I will look it up in, in my file, yeah, I, but I, I thought it was... That. A couple hundred thousand. I was trying to be, you know, my rose-colored glasses there. Yeah. Uh, that was uh, a dark shade of pink there, Scott. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, I, I think it was it was north of a hundred thousand, but I. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Doing some mental math. You, um, you, know, you know, Jeff. It, it, closer hey, to Mr. two. Mr. Mr. Chair, if it was me, I I would uh, I would do as I would do a do them as adults. Yeah, if that's if that's even possible in the mass M of mass DOT format, Tom. I think that makes perfect sense. Do as an adult and let us choose 
You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, right. then and you, you get we, then you get pricing. Then you get the pricing straight up, and then you can choose if we want to pay for it or not. We we may we could use actually chapter ninety mon you know chapter ninety money or or whatever. But maybe yep. maybe we could add alt. You know, put them in as adults. Jeff, can you make that suggestion? Uh, I can make that suggestion that my that was not my understanding of how MassDOT would work, but I will follow up with them and see if that's a possibility. Okay, and we'll have it. We'll get a confirmation for our next meeting. Can we talk about CAJ's one hundred percent submission. So there is bid documents, final drawings, etc. And we've been in contact with them about uh, proceeding. We have that value on our warrant. So are they okay with it? Uh, with proceeding with the, the additional work order for the ps &E? Yes. Yes. Yep. I spoke with them and they said Sunderland's been a great community to work with. And um, I told them we've been working on this for a long time and we're committed to getting the project done. Yeah. Uh, and and they agreed um, and said that that uh, if they have the the signed work order that um, that they would they would continue. Great, great. I appreciate that. Okay, so we just have to get it funded at town meeting. Yes. Do you Any have to take a, a vote on that on signing that work order? Or sorry. No, I think that that's really that's really a, a wise move. Is there a motion to? extend the last change order. This is for a final document for uh, CHA. This is the North Main Street reconstruction. Uh, motion. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so Jeff, we've got that and uh, we can give them the, the written note saying the vote was taken. Great. And I Pass my procurement test. So. Hey! Hey! There you go. Oh, well, now he's really going to have to get a cake. <laughs> so what you, what was it, Jeff? Pardon? Which one? Uh, the overview. <laughs> mm. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I know. I don't know anything. <laughs> was that was that the guy that comes in and tells you that uh, you don't lie to the you don't lie to the federal uh, people because if you lie to them, you're going to go to jail. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. No fraud. No. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Generally good guidelines to follow. And yeah, that's how Martha Stewart went to jail, Scott. Not for anything she did, but what she said. Yeah. So did, did you let him know, Jeff, as a town administrator, you actually have a contract without an assignable revenue stream? I did not. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Details. Right, Chief. Never lied to the feds. You don't, you don't want to lie to the feds. That's how you go to no. jail. Okay. Uh, any other board updates? No. Uh, yes, yeah, Scott. Um, in case anybody's been out and looked at the memorial, they'll notice that the Navy uh, plaque is off. Um, we know about it. It's in the town clerk's office. And uh, we're measuring it up tonight. For, oh, uh, look at that. So we're, we're working on that, and it'll it'll hopefully be uh, it'll be corrected soon. We'll get it back together. Great, and and for and for the knucklehead who keeps going to the cemetery and throwing the Sutter's wine bottles over the bank, cut it out. This is the third week in a row. <laughs> and and Mr. Chair, um, I, I had a couple of uh, discussions with. Uh, um, town residents about Memorial Day. And um, at one point, about 30 years ago, we didn't have any money to run a Memorial Day. And we and there was kind of a, a plan. So we, we may, we're, we're still working on a plan. Good. We may, we may come up, we may come up with a plan. It involves fire trucks and police cruisers. So. Uh oh. <laughs> And we, oh, that shiny new one. I would love to hear about because I'm also talking to the recreation director about other ideas. And uh, so if I can be of help. I'll give you a call tomorrow, Jeff. Absolutely. Nice. So demolition derby, fire trucks versus cruisers. Yeah. <laughs> no. Chief says no. 
All right. Thanks for the updates. If there's any other updates, not hearing any, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion. motion. Or second. We have a motion, motion, second, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye, aye. aye.